What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. We are all about leveling up, feminine freedom, achieving our financial goals. If you enjoy this type of content, then keep listening. Okay guys, let's get right into today's topic. I was listening to uh, one of my favorite creators that I follow on um, TikTok and she said something that really resonated with me. She said that the answer to misogyny is hypergamy and that really as soon as she said that I was like hmm what does she mean but she wasn't just talking about hypergamy in the sense of dating up quote unquote or dating a guy with status or dating, dating a guy with money or with a great career or who comes from a wealthy family but dating a guy who is emotionally hypergamous somebody who is better than the common level of of guy that is swimming around in the current dating pool okay so we want to aim to date better men who are not just better financially they don't just have higher status than the guy that we meet at the local Burger King, but also have the emotional capacity, the emotional bandwidth and the emotional intelligence that is better than the rest, better than the average Joe. Okay. And how on earth are we going to achieve that? How on earth can you go from your average Joe to somebody who is leaps and bounds ahead of that. When first of all, finding a guy like that is not exactly going to be easy because I don't think that um, those type of guys are in abundance, but I do know that they do exist. I do know that there are a lot of guys out there who are evolving and evolved um, and who are interested in being better partners for women and who are not subscribing or at least at the very least actively unsubscribing to misogyny because I don't think it's as simple as um, not subscribing to something that is so ingrained in our societies. So I want to, I want us to, um, explore that these are, um, heavier conversations, but I think we need to have them. Okay, guys. So the first thing to really consider is that you cannot go into any situation from a place of lack because you're really setting yourself up for failure. You cannot go into the dating market. You cannot go into a new relationship. You cannot go onto a dating app um, or into any situation where you're looking to meet people from a place of lack because you are just going to attract weirdos, users, losers, and you're not going to attract the type of guy who would be a uh, level up for you. Who would be somebody who you would consider uh, suitable for hypergamy. You're going to attract people who see your vulnerabilities and seek to exploit them in most cases. Maybe not in all cases, but in most cases. And we're really talking about, we're not looking at the exception here. We're really looking at the rule, okay? So it's important that you don't go into these situations from a place of lack. And what I mean by a place of lack is a place of any type of internal, emotional, unhealed trauma. And this is almost like a buzzword, like unhealed trauma, but it really is important. Okay. So if you have not addressed any issues of low self-esteem, low self-worth, I would definitely um, prioritize dealing with those feelings and those um, emotions and those unhealed um, wounds before you decide to get involved with anybody else because you do not want to go into a situation where you are um, 
exposing yourself to somebody who could um, potentially not um, understand any unhealed traumas that you have and trigger you or make those wounds come to the surface. So you really need to be in a position where you are healed fully or at least on the path to healing. You are um, on the path to um, addressing those, those wounds and you know how to manage them at least, how to manage the thoughts and the feelings when you are triggered, okay? So that is really important. Another area of lack that we do not want to be carrying when we're going into these situations where we're trying to level up is financial lack. And this is just as important as emotional lack because if you're in a situation where you're lacking financially, it is very easy to be exploited. It is very easy to be manipulated by somebody who has more financial stability and more financial uh, resources than you have. Because um, again, if you find a partner who is not ideal, who is not the right partner for you, and um, who is manipulative, you may not realize that they are using financial manipulation as a way to control you, as a way to um, control the relationship, and as a way to uh, gain um, an advantage over you in the relationship or in the dating stage, and we really do not want that. We really do not want to go into a situation where we truly have no options, we truly have no uh, ability to walk away. Now, you do not have to go into a situation letting everybody know what you do and don't have in your pocketbook. No, <laughs> okay? You keep your finances to yourself. That is personal information you do not share. You do not need to let the guy know that, okay, I'm not broke. Okay, I have money. Okay, I have this income and that income and these savings. And you don't need to talk about that. Um, it's not necessary for him to know that you are... Uh, even have a level of financial awareness, he doesn't really need to know that, but you need to know that for yourself. And in order for you to um, have that financial awareness, then you need to be financially educated um, and have financial literacy. So this is your sign. If you don't have a level of financial literacy, that is going to give you the uh, type of financial income that you really need in order to feel stable without a man, without um leveling up without marrying up without dating a rich guy then that is something you really need to address and work on before you seriously pursue hypergamy because um we have almost been brainwashed into thinking it's as simple as just meeting a rich guy who's going to change our lives nothing is that simple nothing is ever that easy okay nothing in this life is free and i'm not trying to discourage you I'm not saying that it can't happen for you I, I think that I think that it can happen for many women um, and I think that it does happen for many women but I also think that um, to cover your own back you need to have your own money it's, you really need to have your own money okay and also while you're waiting to meet that guy you need to make your own money you need to secure your own future and you also need to have options so that if you need to walk away if you need to run away fast then you can do that you can do that whenever you need to and that is really going to empower you when dealing with any man and you don't need to you don't need to lead with that this is the thing you don't need to lead with that you don't need to lead with um the fact that you're independent and that you're successful you don't need to lead with that if you don't want to you don't need to um, throw it in his face. You don't need to do any of those things if you don't want to. But for your own peace of mind, you need to have your own money. You need to have your own success. You need to achieve your own goals. Okay, so I really want y'all to think about where are you at with your income? Where are you at with your active income? So I'm talking about your nine to five, what you do, um, what you get paid for every single month. Are you happy with that? Do you need to 
seek out a pay rise is this a time for you to think about okay how can i make more money at my job or um do i need to think about going for a promotion is this the right time for me to change jobs to change my uh to change the direction that my career is going in do i really need to think about how i'm going to make more money for the rest of this year we are more than halfway through the year this is a great time to do like a little check to do like a little checkpoint um, and to just take a little uh, stock take of where we are. Okay, so is this the right time for you to start making more money at your job? Or is this the right time for you to take on um, more responsibility at your job so that you can put yourself in a position where you can, um, in the future, earn more money and get promoted? Is this the right time for you to start um, leveling up your qualifications, checking off some of the things on your to-do list for your career. Where are you with those goals? And where are you with your, your uh, multiple streams of income? Do you have multiple streams of income? And if you don't, why not? Okay. I think the pandemic has taught us that one stream of income is just not enough. It's just not uh, safe enough in this economy. Um, it's taught us that things happen, you know, pandemics happen, recessions happen, and one stream of income is very close to no stream of income. Okay, so if you don't have multiple streams of income, this is the time to really think about setting that up. Is this something that you could do um, from home? Can you have your active stream of income where you uh, trade your time for money as well as a passive form of income where you do something you work hard at it um, to get it set up. You put some time into it to get it up and running. Whether or not it's an e-commerce business, whether it's um, something that you can do online, whether it's something that you set up, like uh, you create a course, you create um, some type of digital product and you set that up. You really invest some time and effort into that. And then you can uh, make money from that multiple times over and over you can sell that same product you can sell that same course over and over and you only invest time and effort into it that one time that initial time and this is your passive income and is one passive income enough do you need to have more than one passive income do you need to have more than one additional stream of income so we're talking about multiple streams of income here to really give you that safety net so that you know each month you have money coming in from your your multiple streams of income so that if you do have to make a big change in your job if you do lose your job if you do get laid off from your job you're not just now um, in a position where you are like, what am I going to do? Okay. We don't want that. And in future videos, we will talk a lot more about passive income streams and multiple streams of incomes and how to get that up and running so that when you are navigating these situations where you want to, um, you really want to participate in hypergamy, you're not doing so from a place of lack, from a place of financial lack and that is so important so we've reached the end of today's video if you enjoy this video then uh give me a thumbs up your likes really help to get this video out in the youtube algorithm so that more people hear this message also consider following i really appreciate y'all guys support and i will see you in the next video